HopelessRobot.com presents... Previous Time on Cosmic Love. What is between the docking bays? It's a black hole! Whoa, you're not Vortron. Um, no, <laughs> I'm Ned. We are now joined live and in person by Ned Fjorgensen, Chief Accountant for Vortron and the Marfikian Army. So, Ned, you bring us in. Alice, you ding Sparkle Muffin's dinner bell and she comes running. But slimy Marfikians will not see because delicious cat is invisible. Uh, then they kill us? I'm sure they'll find us eventually. But by then, we'll have smashed the quantum pearl. Let's go see a Marfikian about a cat. Broadcasting live from Pleasure Sphere 64. It is my great honor to introduce Madame Alexandra with Cosmic Love. Good evening, Pleasure Sphere 64 employees. You're tuned into Cosmic Love with Madame Alexandra. I regret that I have been unable to broadcast anything on the public channel in hours. Now that Marfikian accountant Ned Fjorgensen is on our side, and we've hatched a clever plan, we can't have Vortron hearing about it and ruining everything. But I don't like the idea of there being listeners out there who only hear silence. As if we've been captured or killed. As if there's no more hope. It weighs heavy on Madame Xandra's heart. So maybe we should get on with the plan and save their asses already. Melty Pupa is right. Fair enough. Myself, Doc Blednikov, Alice Byroni. I think I want to call myself Morticia now. When the delicate yet deadly plan is over, dear. Anyway, we're currently in a safe spot right outside the Deck 100 penthouse suite. We're all shackled up and at the mercy of our sadistic captor, Ned Fjorgensen. Throw a couple cat and nine tails in there and it's a fantasy come true. Although I do try to keep genuine mortal danger out of my sexy scenarios, all the same, I'm feeling remarkably at home. <laughs> Ned, you up for your big acting debut? Yeah, I, I guess so. Now, what do we talk about, Ned? I'm a cold-ass villain. There you go. Alice, you have Sparkle Muffin's bell? Dinger at ready. What do you say when Sparkle Muffin is safe in your arms? I don't want to say it. Say it. The crumpet is in the oven. Exactly. And Doc, you have a laser dildo hidden somewhere in that adorable armor? He's not adorable. He's forged from carapace of vanquished enemies. But yes, have dildo. Excellent. Take us away, Ned. We are your quivering captives, and we are ready to be taken to your leader. Halt! What's this? I've... <clears throat> I've captured the smut woman and the lesser by Ronnie. Oh, and the uh, weird one with all the legs. Beard is matter of perspective. It quiet prisoner. You captured them? I sure did. Yeah, I think maybe someone with actual combat training should be the one to take them to Vortron. What if they try to escape? <laughs> I captured them. I'm taking them to Vortron. Stand down, Randy. Remember that thing? Fine. Proceed. But only because of that thing. It is what I thought. I saved him a thousand credits on his taxes last year. That pleasure sphere pillaging can really do a number on your line eight. You're such a weirdo. I kind of love it. Shh. Stay in character, please. This isn't the Dantooine Day Players present Macbeth. There are real stakes here. Mmm, stakes. Lord Vortron, I have captured these prisoners. I thought they might be of some interest to you. Hold. Hold right there. Guards, assume defensive positions. <laughs> Is everything okay, sir? Just precautions, Mr. Fjorgensen. Now, let me take a look at these prisoners. The smut woman, of course, that's what you look like. You run around in those ridiculous heels all day. Like a boss's boss. <sighs> And you, Gladiator, you could have been one of the good ones. But instead you choose to betray your people, your hive mother, and give in to your shameful interspecies feelings. You disgust me. Doc is rubber. He is hate monster is glue. Told you it's a good zinger. 
And you, Lesser Barani. Morticia Moon Satan, please. We will torture you just as we tortured your father. And you will tell us where the Quantum Pearl is. Obviously, you're not that good at torturing if you couldn't even get my stupid dad to talk. Marfikians are the best at torturing. Shut up, Mr. Fjorgensen. Yes? Excellent work. I didn't think you had it in you. See that, man? You all have the best training and top-notch weaponry Marfikia has to offer. And yet it's my accountant that catches these vermin. All of you, give yourself 40 lashes of shame. I want to see you bleed. Well, I don't want any special treatments, or it's all for the glory of Mr. X. For the glory of Mr. X, indeed. You won't get away with this. But I already have. You're all here. There's no one left to mount any kind of pitiful insurrection. One of the least exciting things to mount, I must say. Is everything that escapes your lips, filth woman? A little filth is nice sometimes. You should try it. What was that terrible tinkling noise? It was like laughter of children. It was horrible. You know, I'm glad we got a chance to meet face to face, Mr. Fortron. I think we can really get to the root of your problems if we just go back far enough. What was your childhood like? You can't get me off track, woman. You know, sometimes these iffy personality things go back to parental involvement in the early childhood. This is irrelevant. The truth of Mr. X cannot be reduced to personal anecdotes. What was your father like? Irrelevant. Was he away from home a lot? It wasn't his fault. He traveled for business. That's why he needed his other family in the Beta Quadrant. That must have been difficult for you and your mother. Gods, take the smut woman away and kill her. Uh, the crumpet's in the oven. Repeat, the crumpet is in the oven. What was that? Marfikian scum will not win. Now you're piping up, shame gladiator. What is this, an open mic? Marfikian scum can lick the rust from Doc's armor. You really want to die, don't you? Come closer and say to Doc's face. Fine. You're all shackled up like Martian cattle anyway. You are going to lose. Ladies and gentlemen, Doc Bloodnikoff has punched Vortron in the face. Repeat, he has punched Vortron in his stupid face. God, stop giving yourself lashes and stop them. In the shoot! Come on! Everyone in, I'll lock it after us. Okay. Ned, Doc, Alice, Cassandra. Okay, we're all accounted for. Quick, Alice, give me the quantum pearl. Please tell me you have it. Uh, duh, I said the crumpet's in the oven. I wouldn't lie about a crumpet. We did our part, Sparkle Muffin. Yes, we did. Okay, and my ionized hammer should be in the utility closet right here. Ball gag, blindfold, sonic screwdriver. He's there! Ah, ionized hammer. Okay, quantum pearl goes on the floor. Hammer goes up. Everyone, hold on to your proverbial balls. Here we go. Maybe we hide now to delay the dying? Into Radioactive Sally's dressing room. It's magnetically sealed. So, uh, what do we do now? We wait, I guess. Doc, do not like bait. Don't worry, they'll find us soon enough. At least we saved time space. At least we saved time space. I wonder how Ted is doing. Eh, I think my name is Ned, but Ted is nice too. You can call me Ted if you'd rather. Not Ned, Ted. Not everything is about you, Ned. Uh, Jeez, I'm sorry. Ted Seven, from the asteroid, the loneliest clone in the universe. You said you'd call him a cab when this is over. I can't believe you forgot about Ted. I didn't forget about him. We've just had our hands a little full with this whole saving pleasure Sphere 64 thing. Well, Sphere saved. Maybe now is the time to call him a cab. I can't make an outside call until the Marfikians drop their communication dampening field. If I could make an outside call, why wouldn't I have done that in the first five minutes? So what? Ted just has to die on the stupid asteroid all alone and shit? That's dumb. 
It's very sweet how concerned you are about him. You just seem really lonely is all. Made me sad. Reminded you of yourself a little? Don't push it, lady. Hey, maybe we answer one last Madame Xander call here while we're waiting for the Marfikians to find us? There's one particular call I've been holding on to this whole time. Don't feel that the answer. I was hoping you'd say that. This is a very special call, and I think we're finally ready to hear it. Here we go. Hello, madam. I am, uh, John. John, uh, Jacob, uh, Smith. Uh, I am Gladiator from the planet Urexia. I am have a desperate problem and need ask advice. John is conflicted about matter of heart. Has been in, uh, has a warm feeling of heart for Trainer. But Trainer is not of Urexian species. Hive mothers say love for other species weak in Urexian bloodline. That interspecies love is both terrible and disgusting and wrong thing that Urexian can do. But, uh, that does not change John's heart feeling. Instead, heart feeling just make John hate self. What is wrong with John that he feels such way? Why is teachings of Hive Mother not enough to make terrible wrong feeling go away? What can John do? Hey Doc, that John Jacob Smith fella sounded just like you. We all got it, Ned. Try to keep up. So, Madam Exendra, uh, no all along, was Doc who call? Was Doc with the problem? Why do you think I've been trying to talk you through your issues this whole time? But Exendra acts so surprised uh, when she find that Tuzu is of Milorian species. I didn't want to freak you out, honey bun. I thought if you knew I knew, you might panic and shut me out. Sometimes in this business it's about baby steps. Hmm. Doc hope one day he as wise as Madame Xandra. Come on, you're making me blush. You took the steps, I just showed you the way. Oh my god, yes, you're both amazing, blah blah blah. I'm not sure I understand what's happening right now. How about it, Doc? You want to answer John's question? Would be honor and privilege. Nope, still don't get it. Dear John Jacob Smith, Thank you for calling the Cosmic Love with Madame Alexandra and Doc Bloodnikov. Oh, I love it. Your problems seem very large and scary now, like giant Urexian razor elephant. But if John uh, really think about it, uh, it's not such a scary thing. More like tiny Urexian appetizer kitten. So John loved Tuzu, a uh, trainer with unknown name. Oh, I get it now! And so Hive Mother have teach John that interspecies love is disgusting and wrong. Is Hive Mother one of gods? Does she know all things in universe? No, Hive Mother is just mortal. Is just Urexian. Is just trying her best in complicated galaxy. She does not know all things. She is just thought hateful thing from her own Hive Mother. Uh, but if she truly love her son, she will accept John for who he is. If not now, then in time. And if not in time, then John can find other family who love John for true John self. For example, Madame Alexandra. Love you, boo. But John cannot live in fear of love feeling. Love feeling is one of greatest feeling in universe. Is what bind alien and human and robot together in one great cosmic song. This is unbelievably lame. John has only one life and would be waste in tragedy if John is to always torture herself from inside just because of love feeling. Live authentic to self, John. Be self and do not apologize. Is worth it. John is worth it. Good luck and keep exoskeleton chin up. Thank you for call, Cosmic Love. Uh oh. Chicks up. It has been my absolute privilege to get to know each of you over the course of the last few days. Doc, there's no one I'd be happier to die with, fighting side by side. Doc is happy as well. Shh, Sparkle Muffin, close your eyes. It'll all be over soon. 
I never saw Andromeda 8. Don't worry, it's overrated. The waterfalls smell weird. Doc is ready. Let them come. Die, Mark Vicky and scum. Look up, Mark Vicky, and hold your fire. Say what? This is the UN. The United Nebula's peacekeeping force? Weapons down, people! Someone named Ted Seven called us and told us you folks could use a hand. Yes, Ted! I told you guys he was the best! Ted called in the cavalry? How did he know we were here? You'll have to talk to Ted directly about that, ma'am. Right now my mission is to get you folks to safety. You know this whole station is swarming with Marfikian terrorists, right? Ted appraised us of the situation. We have an adequate force to subdue the Marfikian incursion. Does UN need assistance in destroying Marfikian scum? Our army is adequately prepared, Mr. Blodnikov. I think you've earned the right to sit this one out. Fine, but just these once. Come with me, folks. We have a ship orbiting that's ready for your arrival. And Miss Byroni, we have your father. Daddy? I mean, whatever. I guess I can bear to see his stupid face. Is that Marfikian on the floor with you all? Oh, poor Ned fainted dead away. Yeah, he's with us. I want you to treat him with the utmost respect. He's the reason we made it through this. He's a very brave soul. We'll scoop him up, ma'am. Let's go! Broadcasting live from Pleasure Sphere 64, it is my great honor to introduce Madame Xanthra with Cosmic Love. Are you a guest on Pleasure Sphere 64? Are you in a pickle about your love life and don't know where to turn? Call in to Cosmic Love and let Madame Alexandra take the reins. Or just tune in and enjoy my tips and tidbits along with the news of the day on Pleasure Sphere 64. You're never alone. And you're never unloved. When you can tune in to Cosmic Love. Hello, ladies and tentacle monsters, listeners and employees, Marfikians, humans, Araxians, and everyone out there tuned into Cosmic Love. Many of you, maybe thousands of you, are just beginning to come out of the temporary coma induced by the sonic bomb. You're confused, disoriented, hungry, maybe a little frisky. But stay tuned, because Madame Alexandra is going to two-step her way through the tough times with you. The full story will come out in due time, I imagine. But the long story short is that the pearl has been smashed, the quantum supernova avoided, the cavalry has been called, and this whole messy situation has been neatly swept up like a shattered Venusian water pipe. We're currently aboard a UN cruiser, the USS Apollo, which is parked right outside of Docking Bay A. Don't forget, there's nothing between Docking Bays. You know it, Mr. Bludnikov. Alice Byroni and Sparkle Muffin have already left to see her father. Ned is being treated for minor hysteria in the sick bay. It's just me, Doc, and the hero of the day, Ted Seven. Ted, how on earth did you orchestrate this grand rescue? Well, ma'am, as you know, I've been hacking into the PS64 database to listen to episodes of Cosmic Love for some time now. When I heard what was going on, and especially when I heard that you answered my call with such inspiring words, I just had to call for help. The Apollo picked me up from asteroid 101955, and I continued monitoring your broadcast the entire way here. To be honest, I was afraid we wouldn't arrive in time. Just in the nick of it. Thank you so, so much. Without you, we'd be dead for sure. I could say the same thing. Well, you're welcome in Madame Alexandra's house of excitement anytime, free of charge. Thank you. And I will sometime. But right now, Ted 8 and I have decided we need to see the universe. You woke up Ted 8? He's in our quarters. Bit of an introvert. Just born, you know how it is. But thank you, ma'am. Thank you for everything. Godspeed, and good luck, Ted. Doc? Madame Xandra? It's back to just you and me? Like beginning. But so different. Thank you. For all. Ditto. You're the best guest I've ever had on Cosmic Love. Doc Dot is now Cosmic Love with Madame Xandra and Doc Lodnikov. You're welcome to co-host anytime. Doc might. Later. But now Doc must rescue Tuzo from Booby Trap Room. 
uh, and tell him Doc's true hard feelings. Then Doc need to go home and talk to her mother. There is much Doc need to do. I wish you all the luck in the universe, my soft-hearted gladiator. You're gonna do great. Is new beginning for Doc. Is new beginning for all of us. You call soon and tell me everything. I'm so proud of you, honey, and I love you to bits. Doc love Madame Xandra also. Take care of yourself, you big lug. Well, there you have it, folks. This has been a very special broadcast of Cosmic Love. I'm your host, Madame Xandra. Tune in next week for when we return to our regular rotation of sex advice questions, fun guests, and the news of the day from here on Pleasure Sphere 64. Until then, stay sexy. Stay true to yourself. This is Madame Xandra, signing off.